Welcome back. Now we've created a weapon data table and we're ready to use this in our weapon class. So let's go back to Visual Studio and here in weapon.h, we can override the on construction function just like we did in item.h where we implemented our item data table. So in weapon.h, let's go up to our protected section and let's override on construction. So we're gonna type virtual void on construction, which takes a const f transform called transform. And this is an override. Now let's go ahead and give this a function body. So we'll go back into weapon. And we'll go just under stop falling. And we'll put our body here. Now we're going to want to create a weapon table path string. So we're going to create an F string. It's going to be const. And we're going to call this weapon table path. And we'll initialize it using the text macro and we need the path to the weapon data table. So we're gonna go back into the editor and find the weapon data table here, right click and copy reference, and that will give us the path. So let's go back and right here in the quotes, we'll paste it in. And now we have a string for the data table path. Next, we're gonna create a U data table local variable. That's a pointer and we're going to call this weapon table object. Now this is going to be equal to the result of a cast to U data table. And we're going to use the static load object function, which needs a U class. We're going to just use U data table static class. The outer is going to be null pointer and we need the string, which is what we called weapon table path. We're going to use the asterisk and type weapon table path. And it looks like I need a uppercase T in U data table in order for that to make sense to the compiler. Okay, so we have the weapon table object, which we're loading in data table using the path that we provided. And now we need to switch on our weapon type. Remember, we have our weapon type enum. So let's add a switch statement and we'll switch on weapon type. And we'll have two cases so far. We're going to have case E weapon type submachine gun. And we'll add a break there. And then we're going to have a case E weapon type assault rifle and we'll have a break there as well now we actually need to check to make sure a weapon table object is valid first so we're going to add an if weapon table object and we'll place the switch statement inside this so let's go ahead and copy that and paste it inside so now we know weapon table object is valid now let's go back to weapon.h and all the way up at the top, we'll see that we called our data table struct f weapon data table. So we're going to need to create an f weapon data table pointer, and we're going to call this pointer weapon data row. And we're going to set it equal to null pointer, and this will get a meaningful value depending on which case of the switch statement. Now the way to set this is we're going to say weapon data row equals, and we're going to use weapon table object find row. And find row is going to require the type, which is going to be F weapon data table. And it's going to require the name of the row, so that's going to be an F name. And we called the row for submachine gun simply submachine gun. And it needs a context string, which we saw that we can pass an empty string because we don't 
really have any use for that. And so this is going to set our weapon data row for submachine gun. Now we're going to do the same thing in the assault rifle case, only our row name is assault rifle. So now after this switch statement, we will have a data row called weapon data row, and it should have valid data in it. So after the switch statement, all we need to do is check weapon data row to make sure that it's not a null pointer. And if it's not null, we can start accessing its values. So we can start setting our properties and we'll go back up to our F weapon data table to see which properties we have. So the first one we have is ammo type. So we can go ahead and set ammo type. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say ammo type. We're gonna set that equal to weapon data row and we'll get the ammo type from that. Now let's go back and look and see we have the next property which is weapon ammo. Now in weapon.h we have an ammo variable called ammo. So we're going to set that equal to weapon ammo. So we're going to say ammo equals weapon data row weapon ammo. Now next we have magazine capacity. And on the weapon class we called this magazine capacity. So we're going to set magazine capacity equal to weapon data row magazine capacity. Next we have our pickup sound and our equip sound. And these are properties on the item class. Recall if we look for pickup sound, we have pickup sound and equip sound here in the private section. Now we need to scroll down to the bottom and make sure we have public getters and indeed we do, we have get pickup sound and get equip sound, but it doesn't look like we have setters, which we need if we're gonna set those in the weapon class. So let's create some setters for pickup sound and equip sound. So I'm gonna type force inline void set pickup sound. Now this is gonna take a U sound Q pointer called, we'll just call this sound. And we're going to set pickup sound equal to sound. Now let's create a setter for equip sound. So force inline void set equip sound. This is going to take a U sound Q pointer. We'll call this sound as well. And we're going to set equip sound equal to sound. So now we have public setters for pickup sound and equip sound. So back in weapon.cpp, we can set those. So we can say set pickup sound, and we're gonna get weapon data row, and we'll simply get pickup sound. And we can also call set equip sound, and we're gonna set that to weapon data row, equip sound. So that takes care of those two. Now next we have a pickup widget and actually I don't think we really need this in here because we really just have a pickup widget widget blueprint that we're going to set on all of our weapons and so I'm pretty sure that we can have that set in base weapon BP so we can go ahead and delete that. We don't really need to set that. Now we do have this item mesh, so we can set the item mesh. Now this is a use skeletal mesh, and item mesh on the item class is a skeletal mesh component. As you can see here in the private section, it's a use skeletal mesh component. But we can set the skeletal mesh property of this skeletal mesh component from here in the weapon class. And we can do that by taking our item mesh, we can get it with our get item mesh public function we created. And from the mesh, we can call set skeletal mesh. And this takes a skeletal mesh. And we're gonna get the weapon data row item mesh. And we're gonna set it to that. 
Okay, so aside from item mesh, now we have item name. Now item name is also on item.h. It's an F string called item name. Now we haven't created a public setter for this and it is a private variable. So let's go ahead and create one. So down here at the bottom, we'll say force in line, void set item name. It's gonna take an F string called name and we'll say item name equals name. And we'll go ahead and use that here in weapon.cpp. We're gonna say set item name weapon data row item name. Okay, so the next property is the inventory icon and we also have the ammo icon. Now inventory icon and ammo icon Let's take a look at where we've put these. Item.h has icon item, which is, it says icon for this item in the inventory. It also has the ammo icon, which we called ammo item. And it seems like this should be called ammo icon, and this should be called inventory icon. So I don't think we reference this anywhere else in C++. The only place we reference this would be in blueprints. So if we were to change the names of these, we would have to go back in and change them in blueprints. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them as is because we have comments that tell us what these are. But in hindsight, if I would have looked into the future and known, I would have probably given these different names like inventory icon and ammo icon, but that's okay. So we have these on item.h, icon item and ammo item and we don't actually have public setters for these. So we can go ahead and create public setters. So we're gonna create a force inline void set icon item. And it's gonna take a U texture 2D pointer called icon. And we're gonna set icon item equal to icon. And we'll create another one, force inline void set ammo icon. It's gonna take a U texture 2D called icon. And we'll set ammo icon equal to icon. And already I think I called it something else. I'm gonna go back up to icon item. I called it ammo item. So we'll have to use ammo item here and we'll set that. So we have set icon item and set ammo icon. I'm not too thrilled about these names and these can go back and get changed later if you wanna polish this up, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep these as they are. And to even clear things up here, let's add a comment here and say item icon for the inventory and it's a setter, so set item icon for the inventory. And for this one, we'll say set ammo icon for the pickup widget. And we'll go ahead and call these. So in a weapon.cpp, we're gonna say set item icon, I believe I called it. Set icon item, rather. Set icon item. And we're gonna get weapon data row. And we called this inventory icon. Now, next we have ammo icon and we have set ammo icon. At least this is consistent when it comes to the setter. So set ammo icon and we'll say weapon data row ammo icon. And just checking, yes, we called it ammo icon. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and compile this and then we'll go back into the engine and set the data table on our base weapon blueprint. Okay, we're back in the editor and I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these weapons and I'm going to search for weapon here in the details panel. And here we have our weapon type and it's set to machine gun. I'm gonna set it to assault rifle and it's not updating so I think I need to close out of the editor and restart it so I'm going to save everything and control F5 
to just go ahead and compile and launch the editor from Visual Studio. And we've opened up the editor and it looks like we're already getting the assault rifle mesh on this weapon on startup. So I'm gonna select this weapon and I'm gonna search for weapon. And here we have weapon type. If I go ahead and select machine gun or submachine gun rather, then we get the submachine gun mesh and I can switch it to assault rifle and we get the assault rifle. Now we can test the other properties by pressing play and picking up this weapon. And we're getting the assault rifle on the pickup widget. If I press the E key, then we pick up the weapon and we also get the correct icon as well as the correct ammo type. Now, one thing I did notice was that when I hover over the weapon, then the ammo type looks like the small ammo type on the widget blueprint. Now this might be hard to see because it's not full screen. So I'm gonna go to viewport two and press play and hover over this. And it looks like the we're using the small ammo ammo type. So that's something we need to fix. So I'm here in pickup widget BP. Here is the ammo icon. And it looks like we have not bound this to anything. So we can just really quickly click on bind and we'll see that we have our item reference and our item reference should have an ammo item. Remember we called it ammo item rather than icon. Uh, and so if we select that, now we have a binding to the ammo icon. So let's go ahead and click play. And if we hover over that, now we see the correct ammo type for the icon. So that's an easy fix. Now we see that our weapon data table is working and all we need to do is select our weapon type enum on the weapon and we get all of our different properties assigned. Now you'll notice that there's a couple of differences. One is when we have our assault rifle mesh, we don't get our glow material and that's because the glow material is specific to the SMG. We created an SMG glow material. We're gonna need to create a assault rifle glow material as well. So we'll do that in a future video. But for now, we have working data tables which will allow us to change properties on our weapon. So this is actually really, really useful because we can take this weapon here and not only change the weapon type, and automatically get the weapon variables populated, but we can also change the rarity and all the other properties will be populated regarding the rarity. So we have an enum we can use to change the rarity. Now the last adjustment we need to make is concerning the rarity. Now you may have noticed if you select the item rarity and change this value that the colors don't change. And that's because we've implemented on construction in the weapon class and essentially we're getting the weapon version of this called on construction but we also have functionality in item.cpp for the rarity so we need this actually to be called as well so in order to have the parent version called here in item.cpp we need to use the super so let's go ahead and type super on construction and this takes that transform so we're going to pass in transform and now the parent version should be called as well which will go ahead and get the rarity data table and populate those rarity values so we can compile this and back in the editor now we should be able to select a rarity and that will change the the value of all of these colors and everything associated with the item rarity. So we can go ahead, hit play, and now we see the rarity change as well. All right, so that'll conclude this video. We will see you in the next video.